Welcome back. It's time to finally integrate our server that we just created using Node and Express to our front end, which was built with JavaScript and React. Let's start both of these servers. And I want you to think of these as two separate computers, because in real life, most likely, these would be two separate computers somewhere that are running separately. And they're communicating, well, through HTTP. I'm going to run npm start here. And with the React app, I'll run npm start as well. And you'll notice it will probably give me a warning or a suggestion. It says something is already running on port 3000. And it even tells me exactly what's running there. And because they're both trying to run on the same port, we can just run them on different ones. So I can change my server to run on something different than 3000, which is the default for Create React App. Or I can just say, would you like to run the app on another port? I'll click W or Y, and now it will create localhost 3001 as my front end. Awesome. So we have our app here. If we go back, we have the app and the server both running, and we want to finally connect them. If you remember our diagram here, we're finally bridging the gap between the two. Two separate instances communicating together. Let's get started. As we know with our React app, in order to communicate with the backend or the outside world, we can use fetch. In our case, we can say component, and let's just do this at the top. There you go. Component did mount a lifecycle hook that comes with React, so we don't have to do arrow functions. And we'll say that here we want to fetch, and let's do localhost because this is our computer, and port 3000. We'll have to do HTTP here. Localhost 3000. And remember the syntax is doing dot then. We'll get a response. And we'll have to run response.json on that. So we can read it. And then we'll get data. And a shorthand way of doing this is if you actually do console.log, the data will automatically get entered into here. So I don't have to do data equals that console log data. It's the same thing. So let's try this out and see if it works. If you remember, if we do the base root route in our server, well, the root is just getting the users from the database. Let's give that a go. I'm going to save. Not getting any errors, which is good. If I go to localhost and refresh and open up the console, I get fail to load localhost 3000s, 3000. No access control allow origin header is presented, blah, 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 blah. And this is an error that is a security feature, really. You'll get this error because with Google, what we're trying to do right now is we're trying to communicate with the outside world using HTTP, but Chrome doesn't really trust whatever we're accessing it. They have no way of knowing that our server is secure. Maybe it's some hacker that is secretly trying to make a request from your web page to their website that downloads some bad software on your page. And that's called access control allow origin. And for us to test this out on localhost, we need to do something called cores. And you can see over here in the error message, set the requests mode to no cores. 
And I'll link to information about course here. But what we want here is we want an NPM package, once again, called cores. And just like body parser, it's one of those common ones that you'll see everywhere. I'll show you exactly how to use it. You see that it's a middleware that we just simply do app.use course. So let's install that. I'm going to npm install cores. And now that we have it, we can just const cores equals require cores and simply do app.use cores. Let's save. Run npm start again. Let's go back to our app. Refresh. If I open up console, I get an array of two users. How awesome is that? It's working. So let's work on the sign-in. We're going to send the sign-in information from the front end to the back end. And the way we have sign-in set up right now, it's only going to check for John. I've minimized this so it's a little bit cleaner. It's going to check for John. And let's put back the password for now to cookies and Sally's password to bananas. I'm going to save and now work on the sign in route. All right, now that we know that fetch is working, we're going to actually try and get the sign in endpoint to work. So let's think about this. If we go back to our sign in page, well, this component has two inputs, the email and the password, that when we click sign in, we will have to send through request body. We will have to send that to the server. The server is going to check if the user exists and then give us a response. So let's do that. I'm going to remove component did mount from the app because we don't need it anymore. And although we can create our fetch function in here in the app.js, because sign in is its own little component and the rest of the app after sign in doesn't really care if it succeeded or failed, I like keeping sign in's functionality within the component. Now, what that means is that we want to turn this into a smart component so that it has state. That is the state of input of email and password. So let's do that. Let's convert this into a class sign in, which extends react dot component. And this will have a render method that receives all of this. I'm going to minimize this just so you can see it. This, oh, we forgot the bracket over here. Make sure we include that as well. Perfect. And we want to close off the bracket here. And we do receive some props, which was on route change. So we'll have to do this dot props dot on route change and this dot props dot on route change. Or instead of doing that, even nicer is to just do it here by destructuring on route change equals this dot props. So everything should be compiling fine and we still have the sign in page. Now in order to get the input values from these two, we just create an on email change function. 
and that will listen to the on change event of the email and we'll say here that this event we will set state for just so we know we're clear we're going to say sign in email and this will be event dot target dot value and on password change we'll have again another function that will update a state that we'll call sign in password and we'll need to create this state so we will do our constructor super and then this dot state equals sign in email which will be an empty string for now when it initializes and sign in password again an empty string now in order for us to use props we also want to pass props here let's save and if this is working the way we expect it to we can now create an on submit sign in event which will now use the state to fetch and for now we're not really sure what we're going to fetch yet so let's just console.log this.state.signin password or actually let's just console log this.state and if you're wondering can we really have more than two smart components in an app where this has state then app has state well yeah absolutely you want to organize your app in a way that makes sense for example sign in is its own enclosed thing so using sign in even though it's a child of app it can have its own state as long as this state is just concerned about sign in then it is a good way to do this instead of constantly updating app.js and making app.js grow to many many lines all right so we have console.log let's see if on submit sign in works let's go to submit bottom before we do the on click to change route to home we are now going to instead do this dot on submit sign in and within here we will run the on route change which is this dot props dot on route change and let's check that out let's save go back to our app i will open up the console here i'll type in test at gmail.com test sign in and i see that i get sign in email empty sign in password empty and that is because we've created these but we haven't added the events onto the inputs so let's do that for the email on the input i'll say on change and you know what let's add these on new lines just so it's cleaner otherwise it can get pretty messy there you go and now i can say on change and on change will take this dot on email change because this is the email and the next one will have a similar thing except instead of having on email change we'll have on password change let's try that out again test at gmail.com test sign in all right we have this information which is great now we can send this 
to our server. And we can do that by simply on submit running a function, a fetch, which we've seen before, for HTTP, our local host, port 3000, and doing a sign in. Now, fetch by default does a get request, but what we want to do here is a post request, as we remember. So the way we do that is in the second parameter, we can pass an object here that describes what the request will be. In our case, we'll have a method of post. It will have headers, and headers accepts an object. In our case, we want to say content type. And because it has this line here, we have to wrap it in quotes. And we'll say that it is application JSON. And now we will say that the body will contain what we have in the state. But remember, in order to send it to the back end, we can't just send a JavaScript object. We have to json.stringify the object. And the object is going to be email, which is this.state.email, or sign in email. Let me copy that. And password, which will be this.state.password. Pass, oh, it'll be sign in password. All right, let's see if that works. I'm going to save. And in here, I'm going to say john at gmail.com and cookies. If I click sign in, I get 404 not found. Let's debug this and see what happened. First off, I did not spell sign in right, so let's try that again. And give that a go. See if that works. Oh, and we want to say cookies here. Sign in. All right, we have sign in bad request. If we look over here, we get a response error logging in. And that's the error that we gave on the server. So it looks like something in our request is not working. Let's take a look. And this had to be headers, not header. That's a mistake on my part. Let's try that again. John, let me just console it here. John at gmail.com. Cookies, sign in. All right, let's go to our network tab and see what the sign-in route responded with. It said, success. So we were able to sign in because, well, we entered John, a user that we have, according to our very simple sign-in form. However, if we want to change this to now say that response status is 400, error logging in, and if that errors to not let us sign in, well, in here, all we have to do is instead of doing on route change, we can do a dot then. And remember that this dot then response will have to do response dot JSON dot then. And we'll say that the data that we receive, and we'll just keep this simple here. If we, if data, equals success, which is what we receive. In that case, well, we will do a route change. Let's save that. All right, let's give that a go. If I don't enter anything here and click sign in, I get a post bad request. And if we look at the message that we receive, we have error logging in. So using this information, we can create maybe an error display here. But it's not letting us log in. In order for us to log in, 
we have to use our John example and make sure that our emails and passwords match. That works. Let's try that one more time. If I do John cookies, sign in, and everything is working. We're getting no errors. Nice, this is working. All right, so we're only just using John for the users, but ideally we can actually filter through everything and make sure that it exists. Now, as I said before, we're not going to be doing this here because this is something that databases are really, really good at. But I want to show you how this would work with emails and passwords matching. All right, so we have sign in working. Let's also get register to work. And register is very, very similar to sign in. So in the next video, we're going to tackle that.